Hey guys, this is Chris from themebutler.com and in this video I'm going to be expanding on my previous tutorial where I showed you how to get set up with beans and our child themes. For this video I'd like to dig a bit deeper um, showing you some of the moving parts in beans and how we can utilize those to customize the Jenkins child theme which is available on themebutler.com. So first of all, we're going to just look at um, a couple setup steps before we get started. Um, this is just a standard WordPress install. I've installed uh, the Beans theme along with the Jenkins child theme and I've imported the uh, demo content so that we've got something to work with, as you can see here. So the first thing we need to do is just pop over to the settings under the appear appearance tab and just make sure that you have the enable development mode. Um, what that does is on the front end every single element on the page um, barring the widget output is has a dynamic um, markup ID which is used to uh, customize the specific element inside um, using beans. So if we take a look at, um, you can see this is the widget heading and what we're looking for is the data markup ID. And we can see this is beans widget title, sidebar primary, categories, category two. So what that's actually doing is it's saying it's targeting the beans widget title but we can choose to target the specific instance i.e. categories 2 or we could target all categories uh, all category widgets or all widgets in the uh, primary sidebar so this really gives a ton of flexibility especially when you use it with the dynamic um, action placeholders so for example, if you wanted to output some custom markup before a specific widget heading. Um, but yeah, we'll look at that a bit more in detail uh, once we get stuck in. So I thought for the first example, I'd show um, one of the coolest features in Beans, and that's being able to use any of the available UI kit components. Um, so if this is the first you're hearing of it, UIKit is a, a front-end library, a library of front-end components. Um, you can take a look at getuikit.com and it's worthwhile going through the site since UIKit plays such an important role in Beans. But for now we'll just look at um, some of the example components that are available. Um, so for example, we've got the grid, which enables us to um, output a, your content using a responsive grid. Um, I'm not going to focus on, on that in this video because that pretty much um, justifies having its own. Um, so for now, we're going to look at um, making this top header um, sticky. So the idea is that when we scroll down the page, the top header will actually stay remaining in place. Um, normally, if you wanted to do this in your theme, you'd have to go and find a JavaScript plugin and then go and modify your theme to include um, the necessary CSS and JavaScript for that to work. Um, in this case, all we need to do is tell Beans that we want to use the sticky component and um, then just add the necessary attribute. So uh, one of the key things just before we get stuck into that though, uh, you'll notice on the get UI kit site there are um, the components are split up between core and components. So the core is normally when you would load UI kit you would load a single CSS and a single JavaScript file and that would include all of these core components. Um, and then the components is essentially the add-ons 
um, add on UIKit components in uh, in Beans, and that's for things that you wouldn't use um, for sort of every project. Um, you just enable them as needed. And in the in in the case of normal UIKit, you would then have to include the necessary uh, CSS or less file and JavaScript to get that working. Um, but in Beans, luckily, it's a lot simpler. So for this one, we're going to just go to the, uh, what we're looking for is the sticky. And the UIKit document, uh, documentation is really comprehensive. So I'd recommend um, taking a look through and getting familiar with it. So the key thing that we really need to make this work is we obviously need to tell Beans to include the sticky component. And then we need to add the data UK sticky attribute. And that's another great thing about UIKit. Most of the components can be activated um, by obviously telling Beans to, to load the necessary assets. But then in actually, in terms of actually getting it to work um, in your theme, it's in uh, most cases just a case of adding an attribute or a couple of attributes. Um, but again, we'll look at uh, look at that more later. So for now, we want to uh, look at the. Um, we're going to actually open up the. Um, that, sorry, there was the other thing I forgot to mention. Uh, we're using the child theme modifications plugin um, for Beans, and what that does is it just uh, loads a custom functions file. Um, custom CSS, less file and JavaScript. Um, and the idea is that you, you would add all of your modifications to the child theme in this plugin uh, rather than adding them via your child theme. And if there was an update later, you uh, would essentially lose all your changes. So by having them in the plugin, it means that um, any modifications you make to the child theme will be kept completely separate. So all I've done is I've installed the plugin, which is available on the Theme Butler site. <coughs> and all we need to do now, I'm going to head over to my um, the tutorial site that, I, that I'm working on. And I'm just going to pop over to the WP Content Plugins. And then we'll see there's the Child Theme Modifications for Beans. So that's the one that we're looking for. Um, really, the only files you would um, customize would be within this custom folder and we've I've added a sample file for each of the, the different file types so that you can get going straight away um, and I'll explain these more in detail as we go along so I'm going to just drag this to my code editor um, I'm using Atom but it'll you really work with uh, whatever editor you're using um, Showing up, let's see. Okay, so we've got the functions.php, and as you can see, it's empty. All that we have here at the top is just making sure the file isn't accessed directly. Um, so I'm going to just open up some snippets that I've created just to speed things up. And the key first thing that we want to look at is this one. So all we're doing is we're adding an action uh, using the beans before load document action hook. And we're attaching this function custom modify child theme. And that's what we have over here. So inside here, we're going to essentially modify the markup as needed. Um, and we'll take a look at, quick, uh, look at an example of that. Um, if we just take a look at the source code. You'll see we've got the body opening and closing, and the first div um, that has been loaded is called TM site, and that's essentially a div that just wraps around everything. Um, unless you are using a fixed width layout where you wanted the background um, separate from the main site, you wouldn't really need this. So just to show you an example of how this works, we're going to just go beans, remove markup. And this is where the markup ID comes in. 
as we can see if, if we want to remove this entire div and that's the opening and closing we would just use the bean site data markup ID so we just specify that there and just close that off and now if we reload we should see that we've been removed um, and there you can see it's gone so the next thing we're going to do is tell beans that we want to use the um, we want to use the sticky um, component in UIKit. So the next fun um, the next function we're going to look at we are essentially hooking into beans compiler um, and we're saying bean uh, hook into the beans UIKit in Q scripts. Uh, action hook and we're going to attach the custom in queue UI kit assets and that's this function over here so again I've just created some snippets to speed things up and we'll take a look at each of these individually so the first one is where we're going to register any um, core components so in this example, I'm registering the contrast component, um, which I'll look at a bit later. Um, but the one that we're actually needing right now is the sticky. And so any core components get added here, any add-on components get added here. And they literally just separate it with a comma and again. Um, so for now, I'll just um, uncomment that one and if we reload the page we won't see anything happen because um, we haven't actually added the sticky attribute yet so uh, next step let's just actually um, go ahead and do that so we come back to the modify charting function and what we're doing here is we're just adding an attribute to the beans header markup ID. And the attribute we're adding is data UK sticky, which we saw was mentioned in the UI kit documentation. And we're just telling it that we want to pass in a parameter saying that we want it to stick to the top. Um, so now if I actually save and reload the page, we see that the header is actually sticking to the top now. Obviously, it's transparent because um, there was no background set on the header container. So we can just pop over to the custom CSS and just add TM header background color white. And now, if we refresh the page. see that the top header is actually fixed and has a white background um, so yeah that's again the sticky um, component has some great documentation over here you can see the example of this is essentially what we want um, what it what gets outputted when we add this line over here and it's really pretty straightforward we're saying we want to add an attribute to this element and that's what the attribute is and that's what the value will be uh, or the property okay next um, let's see boom, boom, boom. Um, so I wanted to just show you guys this one which is really useful um, it's essentially we're hooking into the NQ scripts and we're just telling, um, adding this function to say that we want to output everything that's been enqueued to the UI kit, um, to the Beans UI kit compiler. So if I actually save this and we go back to um, the site and I reload, you'll see it adds this. Um, array to the top of the page and what we have here is it's saying that 
the core components that have been loaded are base, block, grid, article, comment, panel, etc. etc. Et so we could technically look at any of these and say, hey, you know what, we're not using the breadcrumbs. We're not using um, pagination. We're not using the subnav. We're not using the navbar. And you could easily just with a single function remove any of the ones that you're not using and that way you know that the page is going to be kind of as lightweight lightweight as possible um, but I've left these purposely in here just so that you can these are kind of the defaults that are needed um, for WordPress to function properly but again if you're not using any of these features like the comments there's no absolutely no reason why you should load them um, and here we can see that the sticky add-on component has been included. Um, again, we can see that in the core, we don't have the uh, contrast, but if I go ahead and, and comment this, we'll see that it's actually added to the core array. And there it is. Um, so we don't need that right now. We can just um, comment out this function and this is really great you can um, just paste that snippet into any of your page templates and it'll tell you exactly what which components and which UI kit um, styles will be being included so if we look further down we can see that there's the default UI kit style then beans adds its own layer and then Jenkins overrides um, overrides it further and then in the plugin we're loading our own one and these will all inherit based on the order that they loaded in so whatever you set in the custom uh, UI kit style which we'll cover later um, those will take preference over the rest and the CSS that gets outputted would you wouldn't end up with any duplicate CSS because you're actually modifying the variables inside of your UI kit um, so for now let's just we've uncommented that so we can reload um, the other thing I wanted to look at was uh, utilizing the icon component so if we just go up to the core and then scroll down to the icon we can see that um, we have full access to all of the font awesome icons and adding them is really simple. You can either just attach a class to an element, um, like for example over here. Um, so we've just got like um, an I element with a class of UK icon cog. So it'll always be prefixed. All of the U all of the UI kit classes are prefixed with UK. Um, so essentially, whatever icon you're wanting to include. It's just the um, whatever this uh, icon and then the actual name is. So UK icon and then the icon name. So for example, if we wanted to add a uh, external icon to the more info link, so indicating that it's actually not gonna, it's not linking within the site, we can just look up external, and here we see it's. The icon that we want to use is external link square and that'll just give it a solid background which I think it'll be easier to see on. Um, let me just pop back to my snippets over here. Okay, so this is what we're going to be doing here is actually um, rather than modifying this menu item we're going to attach some custom markup to it and that markup is just going to be the um, the HTML we need to output the actual icon we could attach the icon class directly to this menu item the only problem with that is you would find that the menu text would get uh, would look differently from the rest of the menu items and that's because the um, using the class would set the font family to font awesome rather than whatever the theme is using which is obviously what we don't want um, 
So let's just take a look at this example. Get a bit of space here. All we're doing, we can actually change this to beans add action. The smart action is really only used when you're adding a um, action that you want to be over overridable. So if if in the themes that I uh, we create on Theme Butler, it would essentially use the add smart action, and that would enable the um, function or action to be overridden from the modifications plugin. But since this is just for our own use, we could actually even just go as far as to say add action. And here again, we're using the markup ID. Um, and if we look at this menu item, we can see that it's beans menu item 95. Um, what we actually wanting to target is the item link. So that's what we have over here. And so we've got the markup ID and then after that we've got a pen markup. So again, this is the dynamic um, action placeholders and by appending the markup, it's gonna add it within this um, element, which is the, in this case, the link. And it's gonna add it to the end. If we said prepend market, uh, prepend, prepend markup, it would add it to the beginning. If we said before market, it would add it before the link. If we say after markup, it would add it to the end of the, after the link. So again, this, just this basic principle alone opens up a whole lot of um, doors in terms of what you can do with beans. Um, especially when you combine it with UIKit, uh, utilizing UIKit's markup. So we're just attaching this particular function, which is custom add external link icon. And all we're doing here is we've opened up the function and we're just closing the PHP block and then um, reopening it below so that we can just paste in the exact HTML rather than echoing it out. Um, so now if I go back to the demo and reload the page, we see it's added the icon to the menu item, but you'll see the UK text muted adds the um, gray styling to the actual icon. If we wanted to give it a bit of space, we could just add UK margin small left. And as you can see, that spaced that. The next thing I want to look at is um, utilizing the markup ID, what I looked at in the beginning in terms of how the, if we take a look at the widget, how we can target either a specific instance or all um, elements of a type, or um, in this case, all widgets, uh, all widget titles in the primary sidebar. And we just need to take the square brackets out. Okay, and now I can see it's added the uh, primary. Let me just take this. If we had to just add this one, it would just add a white background, but in this case, we want to use the primary. But obviously we don't want it this light blue color. It doesn't really kind of fit in with the rest of the theme and doesn't really pop either. Um, just take this off for now. So what we'll do is um, we're going to look at overriding the UIKit variables by the UIKit style in the custom folder. So clicking on the UIKit folder, I'm just going to new file and we'll call this panel.less since the file's in less. And just so we can take a look at before I actually go and show you where those files are coming from, I'm going to just paste in the variables for the primary background, uh, primary box style with the, um, so instead of being blue here, it'll actually update to a nice dark sort of, and 
Um, obviously, once we've done that now, the links aren't really that, that they don't really stand out, and that's where the contrast uh, component comes in. If we go back to the function and we just add the contrast UK contrast class back, we'll see it actually automatically um, makes all the links and headings and text uh, contrast. The next thing we're going to look at is customizing the uh, post index and single layouts. So if we look at by default in Jenkins the continue reading link um, is just a plain text link. So if we wanted to utilize one of UIKit's button styles we would just uh, grab the markup ID so in this case it's beans post more link uh, And we'll just say beans add attribute and we'll add, we're adding a class and the class is UK button. Okay, so now if we refresh the page we'll see that it's actually added the button style. Um, but if you're like me and are a bit of a perfectionist, you'll notice that the space on the left of the button um, versus the space below is not the same. Um, if we take a look at the markup for the read-on link, we can see that the parent paragraph doesn't have any class or any markup ID set. The reason for that is this post is using the normal read more um, placeholder inside of the post. So what we're going to look at is rather using the excerpt um, to add the uh, short summary of the post which is a, I personally think is a better idea anyway. Um, we're also going to style the, it'll also allow us to style the excerpt differently on the actual blog single page. And that just helps the excerpt stand out from the rest of the post content. So the first thing that we're going to do is instead of using the more link, um, placeholder in the post. We're going to just take our excerpt and paste it into the excerpt panel in the post editor. If you don't see the excerpt panel, don't worry. All you need to do is go up to the top and click on screen options and you'll see there is a tick box for excerpt and you want to just make sure that that is checked. So now that we've updated the post and we've added the excerpt, I'm going to go ahead and update the post. If we go to the theme now and we take our example snippet and we paste it into the end of the functions, what we're doing here is we're adding a filter that's hooking into the content. And again, we're attaching a function which, which we have below and the one thing with the function is that we're actually passing uh, the content variable um, because it's been used further on in the function. So it's pretty straightforward. All we're doing is we're checking if um, the post does have an excerpt. If it does, it'll continue with the rest of the um, function. If it doesn't, it'll return the content. Next, we're adding the UK, wrapping the excerpt with the UK, UK article lead class, which will add, will give it that emphasized styling, and then loading the rest of the post content afterwards. And we, we have a conditional check to make sure that we are on the single post layout, so that it doesn't apply to other um, post types. And then finally, 
once those two checks have been done, we have a uh, one last check to see whether it's on the blog home. Um, and if so, we wrap the excerpt with a normal paragraph, like we can see here, and append it with the uh, read more link where we're adding the uh, UK margin bottom remove class. This is removing the margin on the paragraph that wraps the uh, read more link. So now if we reload the page, we see it's added the continue reading more um, and our button class, because we didn't replace the uh, read on, we're still using the core beans read on link. Any classes that you attach to it will still be applied. And in this case, we have the nice spacing around the, around the button. And if we click on the link and arrive on the single layout, you'll see that the post excerpt is now added at the top and has the emphasized article lead styling.